Hello everyone, my name is Gracian and this is a new game glance for a game called Diluvian Winds. Now new game glances or NGGs are a little mini series I have going on periodically where I look at either early access games or underappreciated games or something along that line, something that people, it's probably new to them. So now, Diluvian Winds is a very cool little, it's sort of like a post-apocalyptic game with little animals and you're really building a base and you're sort of using the skills of the different little animals that you have to sort of collect different things like the bears are good at getting insects for people to eat and the beavers are good at chopping down lumber for you to build with. And then the post-apocalyptic setting is sort of that there's this sort of incredible hurricane-like storm that comes by every so often and causes these tsunamis that are ravaging the land and so it sort of has a potential to destroy some of the things you've built so you sort of have to plan ahead with your resource collection you have to defend your settlement by sort of reinforcing the buildings that are at risk of being washed away by the water so it's a very cool little game so i'm just going to kind of start a day um you can see i'm on day 29 here with my with my particular game it is a, like a story mode like a campaign and I will sort of talk about the UI briefly, sort of like what's going on in the game. And then I'll play a few days just so you get sort of an idea of what the game is like. This game is, by the way, by Alambic Studios, I believe. And they're published by uh, Goblins, who has a pretty good selection of games under their belt. If you haven't bought any Goblins uh, Studios published games, you might want to check them out. They have some really good stuff. So let's resume. And so every day is split into four parts. I will show you that. So we are in chapter three here. There's going to be a little minor bit of spoilers, by the way, for the game, but not too bad. So you can see this is sort of an, an overview of what my people did in the past day, but we're not really going to focus on this. I don't want to overwhelm you. So what we're going to do is we're just going to confirm our, our weather is going to be cloudy today. That's important to know. So we start the day off by people arrive via these wagons that sort of travel across the land. And what happens is you have characters that will stay for a while. You're sort of a halfway house, this lighthouse. So characters will stop by here on the caravans along their way to whatever destination they're going to. And in exchange for food and shelter, they help out by working for you. So it's a very sort of communal, everyone has to work together to survive in this really harsh land. So what we're looking at here is I have two housing slots right now because some people are leaving and some people are coming in on this wagon. So I can select who I'm keeping. So you can see down here, I have a beaver, a squirrel, a otter, and another beaver. So what I probably want to do here is grab a, let's see, a mouse. These are good at construction. This is another otter and these are more squirrel. So let's grab a mouse and then um, we've got a bear here. Bears are really good at collecting insects. So let's get a bear. They always look grumpy too, which I find adorable. So we'll confirm that. So these are our two new guests that have joined us. And then these two are headed off. They were here with me before and they're now headed off along their way. So they head on out. You can see the, the weather is it's getting a little overcast, uh, a little bit foggy and stuff. It's actually really nice looking, isn't it? So let's just take a look around. This is our lighthouse here. We actually sort of play as this guy here, the lighthouse keeper. Um, I've got somebody here recovering as part of a story event. This is one of my characters here that I just came onto the, the group. So this is the lighthouse keeper. He's got his cute little den here where he lives. He's got his little fireplace, his little comfy couch. Here's his little bedroom with like some charts of the area. He's even got like a little a little miniature boat up there, which is cute. Some storage up here. Here's the belly rings. I think it's for mealtime. And then here's the fire. This is the most important thing in the game. If this ever goes out, you lose. You have to keep the fire going with wood. And so wood is a critical resource to be gathering all the time. You can see I usually start my day off with a lot because I don't want to, I don't want to be scrambling to collect it. So I try to make sure that that's, I don't know what this thing is up here. I try to make sure that that's always looking really good. Uh, here we have a crane where we can sort of dredge random resources that are floating by in the water. Here's sort of the interior of the lighthouse. There's like some workshop space for construction and sort of storage and um, some different books and doodads and stuff. Um, over here is the housing area. So you can see this is all the stuff that I've built so far in the game. It's quite a bit, so I don't want to overwhelm you. But I have like a vegetable garden. 
Here's a fishery. Here's an insectarium. Um, this is a, what is this one actually? This is a, a pantry, I think, a storeroom. Yeah, so this stores materials. You can see they're kind of high up so they don't get wet. We have some housing areas with bunks here for people that are staying. Um, up here is a pantry, I believe. Yep, this is where we can increase my food storage. You see they've got like a bag of onions, a big haunch of meat. I don't even know where they got that thing. Uh, over here we have the gardens. This is where people come to relax if they're too stressed out or unhappy from things like not having enough food in their meals or if the weather is having a toll on their mental health. And then here we have a couple of lumber cabins. So these people go out and chop wood. You need a couple of these, I found, because um, if you're upgrading or repairing one, then you can't use it. So you really need eventually a second one to make sure that you're always getting that lumber in. So up here we have our basic resources. We have vegetables, fish, insects. These are foods and we gather those ourselves and we get them from some events. We also have materials here like metal, wood, textiles, and oil. These I haven't really started collecting. I only get them sort of rarely in strange events. So we'll see how that goes later on. Um, up here are blueprints. As I get pieces of blueprints, I can unlock new sorts of bonuses and stuff like that. I'm not going to go into that right now because it's sort of a an unlock. You get part of this part of the story. Um, down here is where we have our food, our meals. So everybody comes down here and we cook over the fire all together at uh, this part of the day here. And then here is where travelers come and go. The wagon will come over here, unload and load passengers, and then the wagon will head out. And then here's like the forest area and stuff where um, we, we gather our materials. You can see this derelict house in the back there. So how does a day play out? Well, in Diluvian Winds, we have four parts of every day. And you go through these every single round. So we have the dawn. This is when we welcome the caravan and the new travelers. Then we have morning. This is where we assign people their tasks for the day, like working in the vegetable garden to collect food. Then we have dusk where we share a meal and we do a little bit of morale maintenance or sometimes you can kind of let it slide a little bit. And then we have nighttime, which is when we uh, fix up the fire to prepare for the next day. And so all of these are very important, um, both strategically and for like making sure you don't lose the game. So let's head on off to the next, the next part of the day. Um, I do want to briefly mention, you can see here we have cloudy, which means the fire goes down faster and morale goes down faster. We have cloudy again here. And then after that, we're going to start getting a tidal wave. So this is where the storm really hits. And so you can see level one hits the first floor tidal wave. So that means this layer of buildings will be damaged by the water. If I've scrolled out like this, you can see these little shield symbols on there. That's because I've taken the time to reinforce these structures so that when the tidal wave hits, it will only sort of do minimal damage. It will reduce its defense and then I need to prepare for the next tidal wave. These tidal waves are pretty spooky actually. So let's head to the next part of the day. So let's click out of there. So you can hit space or you can click that button there. So now everybody that lives here currently or is staying will, will gather and I, the firekeeper, the lighthouse keeper guy, will come and assign tasks to people. So everybody sort of lines up. It's super cute. I don't actually know who this mouse is. I guess they're not one of my travelers. Mina? That's Mika. I don't remember what Mika's doing here. And then this is a, a lizard that got injured and I'm helping him out. So we've got these six people. The number of people you have is dependent on how many bunks you have. So I have, um, here's a housing for one, housing for another one, housing for another one. I think you have a base of three based on, I think they stay, they stay somewhere around here. I can't remember where they stay at night. Um, they may stay down in some of these tents, I'm not sure. So everybody has different skills. So let's just click on Camille here. So Camille is a beaver. So she has a, she can build a woodcutter's cabin, which we have two of them here. So we don't need that. If we had one destroyed, we'd be looking for a beaver who knows how to set another one up. We have a garden slightly improves a traveler's morale. Let me figure out where to put my camera. That would be the least in the way. Okay, there we go. That should be a little better. So back to Camille. So Camille is a species beaver. So no one handles wood better than beavers. Production wood plus five, vegetables minus three. So they're not good at farming vegetables and they're good at doing the wood production. 
Um, so, and then we have land based. And so you can, you can assign anybody to almost anything. It's just that like, for instance, if we were to assign them to wood cutting, we would get a lot more wood than with anybody else. So there's not really a reason not to use them that way. They also have satisfied their morale is good. So they're getting plus three to vegetable, insect, fish, and wood production. So because their morale is a little higher than neutral, they get a small bonus to everything. Their request that will make them want to leave the, the settlement. So the reason they're staying here on a little while before they take the next caravan out is because they want to become happy. And so if we fulfill that request, we get some blueprint parts. So for instance, this person was really wearing down from the travel on the road and the wagons. And so they wanted to stay over here for a few nights to get um, some rest and be a little happier. So that's why that's their request. And there's different kinds of requests. This person wants me to reinforce a woodcutter's cabin. Uh, this one wants me to produce metal, which spoiler alert, I'm not going to be doing more metal, produce a bunch of wood. That'll be easy and uh, have a vegetable as part of dinner. So they've got different kinds of requests and they, they have different sort of difficulties. Like for instance, this one, blueprints plus two is not very many. This produce 12 metal is four blueprints. So much harder to do, but we get double the blueprints for it. So let's assign some people some tasks. Now we're a little low on insects and we're a little bit low on fish. Um, we have one otter. So otters are good at producing fish. So we're going to go ahead and work that character in the fishery. So you can see this person would get plus 31 fish during the day, whereas they would only get 30, they get 31 vegetables, probably because they have this bonus here, and they would get 26 um, insects from the worm terrarium. You can also assign them to lumber, but we're not going to do that because we have better people for that. And you can see some, like in the vegetable garden, there's two slots there. You can always assign two people there. This has one, this has one, and then these also have two. I'm never putting four people in here. I just have the two, like I said, so that they aren't um, occupied by construction or something. And I'm, I run out of wood. Because again, if you run out of wood and you can't light the lighthouse, you lose the game. So let's assign this otter, Omar, to this fishery here. Okay, so then he's going to head off to his job for the day, which is super cute. He's gonna take the ladder up, go in the fishery and start probably getting some lines ready for fishing. So now the other thing we're gonna need is insects. You can see here we've got a plus 31 cause that's how many we're gonna get. So let's grab the bear. Bears are good at making insects. So let's go ahead and work that character here for insects. Cause we wanna have lots of different kinds of food Let's see, we have a squirrel. These guys are good at working vegetables. So even though I'm almost at my cap, I'll go ahead and work him at the vegetable place or her, Evelyn, just because we can just put a lot of extra vegetables in the food tonight. And that'll help make sure people are satisfied with their hunger. You'll see when you have a big group of people, you need a lot of food. Um, we also have a mouse who's good at construction. They can build storerooms. They can build... Um, a house and then they also are good at producing metal which we can't do yet i think it's probably part of the story and then we have these two beavers so we're going to want to get at least one person on wood so let's work this person over here click and then we have one more um, beaver as well so we could so this person wants to become happy so what i might do is work them in the garden where they actually go to gain morale so this will basically let this person, um, I think I clicked on the wrong thing here. Where is it? Rest. Rest in the garden. So that'll give them two morale points. So it's important for me to get that person to the happiest possible because I want those blueprints. I want to unlock new techs and stuff like that, and bonuses. So this person's going to spend the day relaxing because they get special treatment because I said so. <laughs> and then the mouse, I have one more special project I can have the mouse work on since I don't need any buildings right now. Um, I have this thing called the, this is like a dredge line. So we can have this person work here and they will basically get, so there's a 60% chance of them getting fish. There's a 10% chance of wood, 15% chance vegetable, 15% chance insect. And then there's a chance of course that they find something new or interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, even though so far I haven't been getting a lot of cool stuff from it, but I don't really need them to be doing anything else. So they're going to dredge for the day. Um, in case you're wondering, yes, there is underwater construction. I haven't unlocked it yet, but I am excited to do that. Once I get, um, I assume it has something to do with this like gecko type person or whatever is a salamander. Great chemists. 
submarine. Yes, so this person wants to live underwater, but I don't have that yet. So I'm guessing that will be part of this person's story once they get patched up. So spoiler alert, if that happens during this, you will see it a little bit. So that's morning. So they now have tasks assigned to them for the entire day. So let's skip off to dusk. So they've been working for a day. Go to dusk. And we get all the stuff they made. And now everyone will collect down here for dinner. Here they come. We get a big old cooking pot, stools for everybody. And then here's one of the most important parts of the day is deciding what's going to go in their food. So you can see I can put nothing in there and give them no meal and just confirm it. And you can see what will happen is this person will go down to upset. This person's happiness will go down. Uh, a couple other people will go down. We don't want to do this. This is not only really bad for their morale, but then it also doesn't give them buffs. So for instance, if I go to recipes, once you have tried something and made it once, um, if it's blackened out like this and you try it, then you know it forever. So you can always scroll through your recipes and say, um, okay, so I want a complete platter. This is going to give morale, but it's going to make them make less wood, meal, and oil. So this is uh, metal, sorry. So this is a platter you give them to sort of make them happy and fatten them up. And then they're not going to work very well the next day. Uh, there's all sorts of good stuff. So there's mash. So this takes... Um, different kinds of, so it takes more insects than fish and, and vegetables. This would make them produce more vegetables, fish, insect, wood, metal, and oil, but lower their morale. So it's, it's probably a healthy mixture of all sorts of random stuff we have. It'll make them work better, but they're not going to like this food. And I think there's different kinds of mash. Yeah, you can do it with different ingredients being upped. So let's find something we're interested in for the next day. Maybe we look for something like this, where we're going to have Lots of vegetable, fish, insect. Insects up by 10. Uh, wood will be down a little bit, but we do have two beavers. Uh, we'll lose metal and oil production, but we don't do that. And we'll gain one morale. So let's do this one. So let's go ahead and put... We want the uh, same quantity as the other resources. So let's go ahead and put like four, four, and then one more. Oh, I don't have any more insects. Okay, so we got to lower these. There we go. So that's what that one will make. Now, this is considered a copious meal. So if we if we close this off, so let's just remember 30, 30, 40. So if we lower this down, and this depends on how many people you have, how many animals you have living at your place right now. So if I put in one of each, this is only a poor meal. Now, if you only had, say, one or two people, this might be a decent amount of food, but we have nine mouths to feed at the moment so we need a lot of food to be put in this pot so if we did this you can see some people are going to gain happiness from this morale but it's not a very good meal and it can have consequences on them so we're going to go up to so we're up to frugal we're still at frugal copious and then one more copious so this would be a really good meal this is going to use up everything most everything we have we're gonna to have to do it again tomorrow but it's going to improve morale a little bit let's see these people will change and then it's also going to give them this buff as well as a one point of morale so we'll go ahead and confirm that so we finished requests vegetable for dinner we got two blueprints become happy blueprints plus four all right, there we go. So now we have one more blueprint. We got um, the pieces. So now we have enough to um, uh, look at this. And so we have we have three points of projects. So we can do stuff like unlock the mushroom cellar, uh, get the kitchen. Um, we got the larger net. So there's weather forecast. So maybe we can see a little further out what the weather's going to be for planning. There's like stuff for the otters, vegetarian bars, rapeseed farms. We've got the bear, locust farm, oil press. So we can start making oil finally. Fertilized forest. This must help with lumber production. And a sawmill. So it looks like you can uh, make... I'm not sure, actually. I'm not sure. There's a, there's a lot of cool stuff going on in here. And here we have a mine. So we can start getting ore, it looks like. And a dormitory. This looks like it fits more people. So there's all sorts of cool stuff to build. Let's get the, the kitchen looks interesting. I wonder what this does. This is really interesting. So let's unlock this and see what happens. So we've used two of our projects and then let's click out of here. And then we have a story event by the fire. You get these pretty frequently. A story by the fire. I've been traveling the world for a while since the weather went mad. I could tell you the tale of my journeys. 
Are there other places like this one set up? All travelers gain three morale, or that's a very strange object you have. Where does it come from? So I, would I like to hear their story or like ask for one of their possessions to use as crafting materials? I don't need five wood. I'm going to be fine with that. So I'm going to take this morale because that's kind of a big bonus. So this person's going to tell a campfire story basically to all the other characters and increase our morale by being like, there are other safe spaces and I've been to those. So we'll click that one. Yes, I even met some community that live on airships. That's interesting. That's a bold move in a storm, I have to say. Um, so now everybody is eating and just being merry and stuff like that. You can see how happy they are from having a good meal. I don't know where the lighthouse keeper went. That's somewhere. He's all the way up here looking out at the horizon. So then we're going to pass on to the next phase of the day, the last phase, which is night. So everybody finishes up their meals and they all go to bed. And then we head up here and the fire keeper will let us know how it's going. So in order to light the, the keep the fire going, you can see it's starting to go down over time. We just want to add a little bit of lumber. And then the more lumber we add, the stronger the fire for the next day. And also the faster the caravan will get here to pick up and unload new passengers. And the reason you want that to happen is because if you have a bad selection, like let's say you ended up with only squirrels in your camp, you need another caravan to come so you can get some new characters who have some other strengths. Or like I just did, I finished a couple requests. So I want them to, to get on their way and I can pick up new caravan members who might need some help with something and I can get, learn from them and get these blueprint parts. So I'm just gonna go ahead and chuck 20 fire uh, wood in there. That's because if I'm over the 70, I lose it anyway. So I may as well throw more than I need in there. So then you can see the caravan is gonna be here in two days because I'm keeping the fire well lit and I'm gonna use up some of my wood until I'm at basically 70 again. So we confirm that. And then we are now done. So we can spend this time looking around if we'd like to. I do like to do that periodically because there's a lot of cute stuff going on down here. Let's see where everybody's sleeping. There's a, a few of the travelers sleeping here in their little beds. These definitely look like bunks. I don't know why they don't sleep two people in there. There's a little storage area up here in the roof. That's cute. There's the garden, there's the lumberjack areas, and I think people must sleep down in here. Yes, they are sleeping in these tents, um, but they do have nice coverage from the rain down here. All right, so then we can pass on the day, and we're on to day 30. New day begins, and so this day will start just like the others, and so you can see we've completed a couple of these things, and then now we've got some other requests. Now, some of these I'm not, I may not do, like this one, reinforce the woodcutter's cabin. I'm already at level two on them. So if I try to do this, I think I need metal. So I, I really can't even do this one unless it gets hit by a storm before they want to leave. So this person will want to leave in one day. So I'm not going to be able to complete their request. They're just going to head out without me doing it. Same with the metal, um, the wood I can do. I have four days and I made 23 in one day. So that'll be easy to do. And then we can see our overall resources. You can see because we had good vegetable and uh, fish production yesterday, we got a lot of that, but insects are a little tougher to get. We're good on wood because I always try to be really careful with that. And then we've got the weather. So we've got another cloudy day. Then we have a level one tidal wave. This is the scary day. And then you get a bit of a respite from that. You get a day or two where it's nice and calm and clear and people are happier. So you can see here, everything is made more efficiently. Um, and the fire is only going down by one point instead of like here, I think it's three points. So we need a lot more wood to keep the fire going in the storm. Uh, but then it'll be rainbow and then we'll have a couple like clear days and then we'll start ramping up again to, you know, tidal wave two, maybe next time I have had those. So that is Diluvian Winds. I just wanted to do a really brief glance at this really excellent game. It's very cute. It's very cozy. Beware though, if you don't plan ahead, it's not going to be very cozy when your place gets wrecked by a tidal wave. So do look out for that. But other than that, very cozy. It's animals 
eating food together and telling each other cute stories and you're doing stuff like farming vegetables and visiting gardens. It's adorable and fun. So check out Diluvian Wins. Uh, this isn't sponsored or anything. I'm just showing you guys a game that I like a lot. So check out Diluvian Wins if this was you thought this looked interesting and uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Let me know in the comments if there's a game I should check out. Maybe do a glance on, especially if it's sort of underrated or new or early access. I do like to look at those. And uh, check out the link in my description for my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel for more great content like this. Thank you all for watching.